and welcome to season two of Tea with Abby. My name is Abigail Rose. Um, I'm so excited to be here with you and uh, get started on another season of speaking with incredible founders who've taken the risk to follow their dreams and start businesses uh, that fulfill their passions. And today I'm so excited. Our first guest of season two is uh, Rebecca Cole. Hello. Of happy family. <laughs> Hello, Rebecca. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. To you. <laughs> Shout out to Capital Factory for sponsoring the beverages and my memoir for sending us teacups. <laughs> so uh, why don't we kick this off with you telling us about um, your your business? Okay. Um, and who you are. Yeah, so um, Rebecca Cole. I know that's such um, a that's yeah, such yeah, like yeah. a heavy <laughs> thing to be like, no, Any? tell us who you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll do just kind of a background because I think everyone kind of has their path. Um, One of the best pieces of advice my mom gave me is like, it's not a straight path. It is a really windy path and you're going to end up where you're supposed to be. So I actually moved, um, my husband and I moved to Austin in 96 out of grad school um, and I started in the tech world. So I engineer by training, Mm -hmm. um, have my master's in that and started at Motorola that then became Freescale, which is now NXP, so semiconductor world. Wow. Um, yeah, and was kind of in back end there and um, project manager and looking at um, worldwide process changes and those kinds of things. Um, had kids. And in 2007 was like, I can't, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I was making everyone around me miserable. I was making myself miserable. My, my husband travels a lot with his job. My kids were little. Mm-hmm. And so um, decided, let me go do something that I wish I had. So at that time, I started my own business um, called Nurture My Child in 2007. And really, it was in this child care um, nanny, child care, child care consultation space. And mm-hmm. so it was just something that I wish I had had. And so for me, it's been interesting in this journey at Cap Factory because that business was really a life, what I've learned they call a lifestyle business. Um, <laughs> what, and it, what does that mean? So it's really just, it's supporting the lifestyle you want. Ah. So I was able to, you know, work basically part-time, work out of my house, be there for my kids, make some income, yep. but really have a balance, sure. um, which was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in September of 2018, I merged with um, Chad Bakaitis, who's my co-founder and CEO, and we kind of merged our two companies and my kids were older, they were in school later. And so he was really like, Let, let's like go big, like let's do this. And so it's been really interesting like yes you can own your own business but being in an accelerator trying to get investment is like a completely different ball game yeah. and so I just feel like every step like I have learned so much in very different ways mm-hmm. and from very different people so yeah like the capital factory has been invaluable for I feel like just coming up to speed and learning the language and learning like how do you get from point A to point B and yeah. how do you do all that? Yeah. So um, would you nurture my child? You would have considered as more was more of like a small business that you were running. Right. And now it's just grown and transformed. You merged and it's become what Happy Family is. Right. Now. Right. Uh, what is uh, Happy Family's mission? Yeah. So we our little tagline um, is, you know, we rescue parents from the chaos of finding care for their children from birth through high school. So really what we do is we match families with quality affordable care for their children so that's nannies child care preschools camps after school care private charter schools and so really my growth as a parent going through all these years my oldest as we were talking about earlier is now 18 um is you know when they're little you have no idea and you're just trying to figure out care but when they hit elementary school they're 17 weeks off of school and Like you have a summer and spring break and what do I do? And every single year I'm trying to find all of that care. And so it actually for me became a lot more complicated to balance work Mm -hmm. and children when they got a little older, when they kind of were in that five through 14 stage. And so I think that really was an epiphany for myself and and Chad as well, who he and his wife have three girls. And so it's really this understanding of, you know, families and employees we do a benefits program Mm -hmm. is our our main push um Mm -hmm. need help Mm -hmm. in that zero to five year space Mm -hmm. but 
after that, they they need help too. And there's really nothing <laughs> out there at all that's in that space. Yeah. And so we just came in and said, well, we can do this. We can fill this. And we know there's a need. I just had this flash of um, my mom went back to school when I was 11 or 12. Yeah. Um, and she went through, got her degree, got her master's, and she became a teacher. And then uh, I told you earlier, my dad's been running um, – his father's his company. Yeah. And uh, I have such vivid memories because this was like pre cell phones of sitting after school or after a program. But there'd be this time that one of my parents was working and they couldn't come pick me up. And so they had to scramble around what was right. going to happen. And I'm just waiting. And waiting right. And waiting. They were yeah. kind of notorious for that. I forgive you guys <laughs> now. Love you so much. And then my auntie would show up and be like, Dad called. You know, he's going to be late. Yeah. But um, I, I just vividly remember those in between times always trying to figure out what was going on my mom always yeah. trying to get us into camps or um you know find ways to keep us entertained so that we weren't just sitting at home yeah. by ourselves um, because they knew that that was definitely not going to help us grow into the best people yeah, we could or just be, be safe t- i mean you know all of that and i think that's the thing is it's changed like you said so much i mean certainly changed a ton from when i was young mm-hmm. but um you know, if you look at just Austin surrounding areas, there's like over a thousand camp programs. There's 900 ish, over 900 childcare programs. There's, you know, so it adds up and you're like, where do I even start? What, what do I need to look for? So we're really big on education as well. Mm -hmm. Like not just matching families, but educating them on here's what makes it right for you. Here's what you look for. Um, I'm a big proponent of you got to go with your gut and it has to feel right for you. And that's really different for every family. So we, again, really um, work with families to find what's right. So Mm. I love helping people and I love solving problems. So it's just like a perfect fit. Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're working with families and children and parents and, um, that, 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 that to me feels kind of joyful. Like, yeah, what a beautiful, uh, industry to be navigating. Yeah. Well, to take, a family who's so stressed out Mm -hmm. and they have no time and they don't even know where to start Mm -hmm. and and going through that and then having them come back and just be like thank you so much like this made all the all the difference and their you know their child is happy I mean I've had my kids in a program once and they were not happy and it was miserable like I was literally in tears some days and it was like how fast can I get my child out of the situation but a lot of times you're you're stuck, you right. know, right now, now a days you can, there's a lot more work flexibility, mm-hmm. but you know, back in 96 in the tech world, that certainly was not the case. And so, you know, it is some hard choices sometimes. Mm-hmm. So we just I love to come in and take that stress away. Cool. Yeah. One more question about happy family. Yeah. Um, who, if for anybody out there, maybe you're listening, uh, who is your ideal, um, customer? Who's the ideal profile of who you're helping? I think, um, I think it changes Mm -hmm. depending on the age of your children. So I think where we love to have people enter a happy family is when they know they're pregnant. Um, Because if you need full-time infant child care, literally it's over a year wait list for some programs. I mean, it is insane. And so some people don't know that. And so I love to do consultations with families that are again, pregnant, and we just talk about all the different options, all the different price points, when you have to start looking for different types of care, what do you look for, what do all the philosophies mean, what are they even talking about, (laughs) and just kind of do that education piece, and then figure out, again, like, what's their game plan, so that's, like, the very earliest stage, but I think there's really key points, like, when a child moves to preschool age, um, when a child moves into elementary and it's the first time you're dealing with summer camps. Mm. Um, but even that changes. Like I was saying, when my kids were little, I made them go to the same camp because <laughs> I was like, I am not dealing with this. But then as they get older and they're like, Mom, I love this. And, right. I, you know, I don't. I like this. Again, I, I think it's just different stages and different needs. So we kind of call it the continuum of care. Mm-hmm. And so I love taking parents in at any stage and then helping them identify where we can help and when we can help next. What an amazing business to start where you're like, well, the profile is Brit. 18 18 years. That's amazing. Well, it is. And then if you have multiple children, (laughs) two, three children, minor space, three years apart. So really, I could have used the services for in my own situation, probably about 18 years between the two. Wow. Um, And so 
that is really great for us is it's not just a one-time use when we look at keeping families in the pipeline or keeping your customers in the pipeline. It's really, again, showing that value to them and saying, they're like, yes, I want to use you again because you were so helpful for me. So that's really what we're striving for. So cool. Yeah. What's like um, one of the biggest milestones you guys have hit so far in your journey? Um, I think actually it was... Um, this year mm -hmm. so we like I said our we do consumers but our big push is to be in part of employee benefit mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. because again just keeping talent recruiting talent mm -hmm. um, having a family-friendly workplace culture is really important right now mm -hmm. um, and as the job market gets really tight it becomes even more more important mm -hmm. um, so we in um, right at the end of 2018 had a company out of the blue call me and said, hey, I want to talk to you about your benefit. I had never been introduced to them before, didn't network with them, just out of the blue. And I called, so we set up a call and I called and like I start my, you know, kind of my spiel and the customer demo and all this. And he stops me and he goes, oh, I'm already bought in. I just want to know the terms and where do I sign? <laughs> it was a 15 minute meeting and we had a contract and it was insane. So I was like, to me, it was so amazing because he found us through Google. And luck is when preparation oh my gosh, yeah. meets opportunity. Absolutely. And so it was kind of that validation of number one, our, our website is working, right? Like, right? The lead gen is there. Yeah. It actually works. Um, but it was that like validation of there's a need in this, in this space. Mm -hmm. um, he got it. He found us randomly, liked what he saw on the website, and was bought in before I even uttered a word. And so, so cool. to me, that was just like, yes, okay, we're clear, we're concise, you know, people got it. Um, wow. And, and it's happening, right? So that was a great um, kickoff to 2020. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, what a yeah. That's such a good feeling um, to know that you, your efforts have are right like yeah you've done the right things to get in front of the person who needed it and right your market so so what's that i've learned market fit right like yeah it's exact you yeah. found it well and that that i think is interesting to me too because like when we first started in the cat factory accelerator mm -hmm. program right like everyone's like like your idea but people we met with the mentors and the investors they like had a lot of questions and it was obvious we weren't being as clear as we needed to be mm -hmm. or weren't communicating like our idea quite well enough. And so then, you know, we had a six month program here at the Accelerator. So by the end of that six months, we were we weren't getting questions anymore. We were getting head nods. Yeah. But then it was like, go show me. Right. Because you can do all the research and people will be like, yeah, that would be amazing. And then you're like, OK, great. And so you run with an idea. And then you're like, well, how much would you pay for it? Oh, I would totally pay for it. But then actually having people pay for it, right, is like a different story. And so I think mm -hmm. it's been that evolution for us. And so, again, that phone call was like, OK, we're there. Yep. Like, we got it. We, I mean, there will always be changes and tweaks and right. modifications. Sure. You can never s stay stagnant. But it was just kind of that first time that it wasn't a connection it wasn't an introduction. It was a truly blind call. So that was really cool for us. And it was a man. And it was a man. Looking for yes. these services. Yes. Well, so he was um, in the C-suite. Oh, I see. Um, but said, our company philosophy, our company culture is we want to do right by our employees. And we want to understand, like, what what we can do to help them with where they're at and so they had um, several employees that were newly pregnant um, actually not even the employees the, the spouses because mm. um, it was two men mm. whose wives were pregnant mm -hmm. and so it was really refreshing um, and again kind of validated there's a need out there and people are yeah. seeing it and yeah. it's not just moms and right. I think that's amazing right it's not just moms dads are just partners, whomever, right? Your family that are going to be raising these children mm -hmm. are just as much a part of it and need that benefit. Mm -hmm. Right now, more than ever, I feel that the conversation is around not just women in the workforce, childcare, um, your your postpartum care, your yep. parental leave, your maternal leave. Um, this this conversation of politics and childcare 
um, yeah. is such a hot topic right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you been met with any resistance from maybe some more conservative minds? Or do you generally feel that the conversation is moving into this direction where people are understanding it's not just the mother who is responsible for child care, but it's, like Everybody. you just said, everyone around them? Yeah, I think um, it's definitely shifting. I mean, I feel like we're early enough where we're targeting the companies that we know get it, right? you know, if that makes sense. So we're really looking at tech companies. Mm -hmm. We're looking at law firms. We're looking at banking. There's a lot of um, women and they want a lot of women retention. And, um, and so um, I don't know that we've necessarily approached a more conservative company, mm -hmm. but I do feel like, just like you said, I think there's a lot of benefits right now around parental leave making it for everyone so i i remember <laughs> i'm gonna age myself but you know my again motorola at the time when i had um my daughter back in 2002 they had six weeks maternity at 50 percent, and that was amazing like for the time that was amazing and you could take as much you could take more time if you wanted unpaid and your A job was guaranteed, but not your job. So I ended up taking four months, which again was unheard of at the time. And I was so thankful that I could do that. But just, wow. and there was no discussion about paternity leave. I mean, yeah, like, sure, none, sure. right? So when I look at that, like how far we really have come, and again, that was an amazing benefit for the time, right? So when you look at how far we've come, I just think it's wonderful. I mm -hmm. mean, you've got adoption assistance, you've mm -hmm. got fertility benefits that some companies mm -hmm. are using. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really great. I think where we're coming in is saying, well, that's a lot to help you get pregnant. And it's a lot right after the birth. But where's the benefit after that? Where's the benefit yeah. to find you the care for the next 14, 18 years? Yeah, like you want to keep There's, your job and you're right. You give There's your kids still quality that of life. Gap. Yeah. Right. And and not everyone what works for you may not work for me. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can't afford or don't want a nanny. Some right. people want part-time. So, I mean, every family is so unique, and that's what I love, too. Like, every family I talk I, I love their stories, so I'm kind of like, tell me what's mm -hmm. happening. Tell me what you need. Tell me what makes your family unique. I just find that fascinating, mm -hmm. quite honestly, because there's so many different solutions in the way people make life work, mm -hmm. and I just – Again, I think that that's like really cool. <laughs> so no, it is. I love I love the stories behind yes. behind the scenes and figuring it out. So, would you say is that what drives you to keep going when things get frustrating, or what do you, what what kind of why um, keeps you rooted in your journey? I think the why is just I believe in it. I mean, I think anyone that's going through this journey, if you don't believe in what you're doing, mm. you won't last long, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not about making them I mean trust me it's about making the money yeah. but it's it can't be just about that yeah. you have to really have a passion you have to have a mission you have to have something that drives you so yep. for me it's like I've lived this problem all my friends have lived this mm -hmm. problem I know we can make it better like let's do it right um and I think also I'm just really stubborn and I hate to lose. And so it's like, I'm going to make this work. Yes. <laughs> Come hell or high water, like this is working. We're going to figure this out. <laughs> so. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> Tenacity and perseverance more than anything. Yeah. Cool. But you can't have those things. Like you said, it's it's pretty difficult to um, to have that like, you know, gusto if you don't believe, believe in it. what you're doing. Absolutely. And, because then it becomes pretty tiring pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Wow. Do you have a story or an experience you'd share with us about a time period that has been difficult in this um, founder's journey so far? Um, or has it all been great? <laughs> if that's the case, well done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be lying. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, I don't think we have, um, like, I know you kind of sent me, so like, what's your biggest fail or mm. what's the thing to me I feel like it's such a roller coaster mm. um where you'll have one day or one meeting and you walk out of there like we're gonna conquer the world and we're gonna get millions of dollars of funding oh, yeah. and this person is so gonna make it happen yep. or they believe in me and then literally the next meeting you walk out of there and you're like this sucks we suck we're gonna fail yep. like and and so 
to me, that was a little unexpected. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have emotions, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I'm a pretty even keel person. I let a lot of things roll off my back um, just because I've had to in life. And so it just, that's my personality. And I'm always kind of like, we can do this, you know, how are we going to make this work? But it has been tough on those days where, I mean, we've had some mentor meetings and Mm -hmm. they were not pleasant. Mm -hmm. Or we went in there to ask a question about, hey, can you help us with the sales strategy? And they literally told us our website was crap and it sucked and we needed to redo the whole thing. And I'm kind of like, I mean, thank you for the feedback, but that's not even what I'm asking you. I'm here to ask you so it's just, I think, <laughs> do you know? I mean, and, and I know what you mean. Yeah, it's Completely. so turbulent. Um, Even when the comments, I don't, I love this person dearly, um, who was like, you got to change your logo. It looks like the hurricane symbol. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, and I think also, as you know, there's always a thousand more things that you should be doing. Sure. Right? Like my to-do lists are literally like pages and pages long. And so it's like logo. Okay. Where does that fall? Yep. I'm supposed to be making a sales call. I'm supposed to be yep. working on the business. I actually have to meet with a client. I'm yep. to, where, where is that logo fall? Sure. Right. Yep. And so I think it's, um, so I think the h- hardest things for me have been that roller coaster and realizing like, it really affected me more than I kind of expected. Mm. And then there's so much input and it's all, most of it is really good. And even the negative things are good, Mm -hmm. right? You just have to think through, they have a point, but do I agree with it or not? It's your business at the end of the day. You don't have to Mm -hmm. do everything everyone says, right? Um, But sifting through all that data and feedback and trying to figure out like, where does that fall? So I feel like, our time in the accelerator, our six months, we came out of it so much better. But I feel like, honestly, we also wasted a lot of time mm. because we were so caught in the churn of sure. the feedback. And sure. so it's a it's a pro and a con. I yeah. think it was just, for me, that was kind of the biggest learning experience, I think, is how to take it but but not dwell on it or right. take it, take that piece and go. Yeah. Um, Do you, as a company, have anything that, um, whether it be – policies or values or OKRs like when you're getting all this feedback we've started to realize that um, it's wise that we take it in and then Mm -hmm. we kind of look at the foundation of what we've set to build our business on and then we decide okay is that relevant to where we're going or is it not take it or leave it is there anything like that for happy family that not like a full process Mm -hmm. quite honestly I think we just do it naturally. I think that's what actually, I know you have a co-founder as well. And I have two. You have two. That's amazing. Do you have one? So we, I have one Uh co-founder and then we have a CTO and Mm -hmm. like a VP of engineering that are also working for equity. Mm. Best free labor ever. Um, (laughs) But it is so nice um, to have someone else to get a different opinion. Mm -hmm. So I think we just do it a little bit more informally, Mm -hmm. kind of that debrief afterwards of saying, what did you think? And both And so I think if it hit both of us as like, this is really something we need to consider, then we definitely make it a priority. If Mm -hmm. it's like, well, you know, we just kind of have a different viewpoint. We kind of put it on that middle tier. Like, we'll get back to it in a week and see if we still feel the same way. Um, So I think we kind of do it. We do it, but do it maybe a little bit more informally. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's such a ride, honestly. Yeah, it is um, a ride. Buckle up. I can completely (laughs) relate to that feeling of we're on top of the world. And then we're like no we're not we're back at the bottom yeah but it's it's the founder's journey is definitely like two steps forward five steps back absolutely six steps forward one step back and it's this slow incremental kind of thing um what excites you the most about the future uh of both happy family but yourself um as a founder of this company yeah i think um I think what excites me is probably what excites most founders, which is just the potential, Mm. right? I mean, I look at it and I go, I mean, this could go national in a heartbeat, right? Um, If the the famous, if we got funding, (laughs) but it really could, you know, I mean, this is, we're building a technology that's totally scalable with that intention, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like we've been really smart about the technology we've built and, and always thinking about like, could we scale it? How fast can we scale it? How do we get the data? You know, all of those things, um, which is important. So to me, it's, you know, starting here in Austin, but then taking it, um, 
national mm-hmm. as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. And so that to me is super exciting. Yeah. Um, I also honestly love managing people. I did that in my previous life. And then when I was just myself, I only had like one or two part-time people. Mm-hmm. And so t- to me, I love um, knowing how to do the business, but really thinking more strategically. Mm. Um, one of the comments one of our advisors made that to me was like huge aha light bulb moment was um, he said, it's really hard to work in the business and on the business at the same time. And I think for me as a as a startup, you, you have to do both and you're constantly juggling your time. Like I'm literally going from writing checks for payroll or, you know, like to pay people oh, yeah. to you know, making my pitch, you know, like changing the, the slides to, to make my next pitch to where do we need to be strategically? What's our product product roadmap to doing a sales cold call, like, and everything in between. And yeah. so when he said that, I was like, yes, that's my struggle. That is the struggle is real. And that's my struggle. So I am most excited about getting out of that. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, I talked about this, I think maybe in episode two or three. Um, people kept preparing us to understand how to navigate on and in because all of us are doing on and in right. Robert's operations. Georgina is building our product, but she's also kind of our, our, our CMO in a way. Right. So she's working with the marketing team, managing them. And then I'm doing production. Also supposed to be doing CEO things. Um, and as much as I love our customers, I love our people. Um, that's definitely not where I'm happiest. I'm Mm -hmm. happiest in the big vision. Right. And so our mentor this morning advisor was like, that's great, but I would love to see that at like 75, 25, 75 CEOing. Right. 25% in in your business. And the the more you can do that and, and the quicker you can get there, the healthier. Yeah blended sense will be Um, absolutely but it's really really hard well and it's tough too um so we're um we're Mm self-funded just with what we're bringing in our revenue which is great amazing so that gives you a really long runway and then we're kind of again like when we were at investors they're like you know love it love the concept are you actively fundraising we're about to love the pro forma now Uh prove it to me and then come back to me and we're like well we could prove it to you if we got money you know so it is this like catch tw- it's such chicken in the egg yeah between a rock and a hard place like yep. it is so hard to be in this space right now and it'll change of course but it is tough and so yeah it is trying to carve out that time yeah it is really hard how do you s- since your business is rooted in families and nurturing and <laughs> i'm i'm dying to ask you what camp sloop was okay so camp sloop way back when was a summer camp finder cool um and it was a website that um so i had my business nurture my child uh-huh. it was kind of focused on child care yep. and then i actually joined forces with another woman um here in austin to find just a camp business cool. so kind of i had my own thing and then yep. this was together uh-huh. um and then i eventually bought that out from uh-huh. them and merged it into nurture my child so it included camps and now with happy family with chad it has expanded to this entire continuum of care so it's just again kind of been a journey yeah it's like incremental building blocks yep. that have all your experiences leading up to this um so since you are rooted in family you're rooted in care um and and nurturing um how do you at the end of the day come home to your own family and take a breath and step into <laughs> rebecca um what it do you is, like to do it is hard it yeah. is totally hard i mean i think um yeah like two things that keep me sane. so i heard you say on one of your podcasts I watch and I listen <laughs> um you should too um but I heard you say you are a introverted extrovert so I am an extroverted introvert mm. and so I can do this I can network although it's tough for me if it's a cold like I just walk into a room I don't know anybody but like mm. I have learned so many new skills through this but I need that recharge time, which I know you mentioned on a previous podcast. So it is super important for me. So exercise mm-hmm. is my de-stress and my sanity. Mm-hmm. And um, as bad as it seems, curling in my bed with my Kindle. <laughs> 
is my <laughs> that is my happy place. My husband is like, where did you go? And then he'll walk in the bedroom. He's like, oh, you're in your happy place. I'm like, yeah. And it's just that de-stress. Um, I know you're going to ask me for my little one-liner, but it pertains right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to say it. Yeah. I think um, one of the, like my mantra is be where you are. Just be where you are. And, and it, it comes exactly in this mode. And so I have really had to separate that. I was getting into a habit of just constantly having my phone with me. Mm. I'm doing work as we all are in the Mm -hmm. startup world at all hours of the night. Mm -hmm. But I had to just be like, look, if I'm with my family, I need to be with my family. I need to be a hundred percent engaged. And then when I'm at work, I need to be at work and I need to be a hundred percent engaged there and stop trying to overlap the two. And so to really carve out, like, this is my me time and it's okay. Like I've really had to work on that. Like it's okay to have my me time Mm -hmm. and this is our family time and this is the kids time and this is my work time. And sometimes that work time is at 11 o'clock at night because I've had to not had to, but I've had kid time yep. earlier with a game or a practice or whatever. Sure. Um, but trying to juggle too much at once, I realize I'm not good at any of them. That, that's when I become not, I don't do any of them well. And if I can I had just that take that. this year too. Yeah. I was like, it's great to be doing lots of things, but if none of them are being done well, right? what's the point of that? Or your brain's 75% there, but 25% right. not. Right. And so you're so much more efficient yeah. when you're just like, this is this is my three hours to get this task done mm-hmm. go without any interruption mm-hmm. um same with email like I'm like ping what's that like I want to yep. respond so quickly like I'm really big on customer service and response time and I don't want anyone to like be delayed in their work because of something they need sure. from me and so I do everyone else's stuff first yeah. and so I had to just really be like you know what sometimes just just turn that internet you know turn it turn the wireless off and just work on your project. Mm-hmm. And so I think just realizing how to do that mm-hmm. is um, has been a been really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> have been really helpful. And always but yeah. kind of an ongoing yeah. learning experience. Yeah. But wow. exercise, body moving, it makes the uh, brain work. Yes, it does. It totally My team, does. before we have meetings, I'm making everybody stand up. We stretch, we move, yeah. we get our, our jiggles out. Um, I'm so inspired by um, the CEO of Outdoor Voices. They have a recess uh, in their company every, nice. every day at 3 o'clock. Yeah. They all stand up and do some movement, and it just hits yeah. reset. Yeah. So well, I mean, key. there's so much research when you said recess. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so much research out there about children and learning and how important movement and breaks are. And I don't know why we think that's different as adults. Right. It's not. It's yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. And honestly, some of my best ideas come to me, you know, in the middle of a run or a walk or wherever. And you're like, oh, because your brain, you know, some endorphins are going. And Oxygen. You can just, yes. 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 And just take a little break. Yeah. Just I love how break. movement makes you feel so present. And yeah. that is absolutely related to your be here now. Quote. Yeah. Um, and I, I know you also brought something else to share with us. Uh, well, um, <laughs> I was saying, I know, too, you were, I, I don't know, in some of your podcasts, you're like, what's what makes what ties to the business? So um, although we're taping this now and it is late. But anyway, Martin Luther King was yesterday mm-hmm. and he is definitely someone um, extremely admirable. Mm-hmm. Um, but he said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. So I think as a business motto, as a startup, it's so true. And kind of what we were talking about with the ups and downs, like you can't let the downs get you down. Like if you can just do one thing today, like just do it and keep that forward progress. Because when you stagnate or when it festers and you just stay stuck, Mm. you're done for. Right. And so I just liked that quote just in that mindset of right. it's just one one foot in front of the other. Yep. Just just keep moving, right? Just keep moving. Just if you have to crawl to that next finish line, yep. do it. But don't give up. Be here now. Yes. Little statement sip for y'all today. Let's say it into the mic one more time so our our listeners know what's up. Be here now. Yes. Be here now. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That's another episode of Tea with Abby. Tune in uh next week. Season two, here we go. What's going to happen? Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much for watching Tea with Abby. Be sure to click subscribe and smack that like button so you can stay tuned. (laughs) Smack that like button. See that like button? 
Smack it. Thanks so much for watching an episode of Tea with Abby. Be sure to click subscribe and smack that like button so you can stay tuned with new episodes all year long. And if you want to learn more about Blended Sense, visit us at our website, www.blendedsense.com, or follow us on social at Blended Sense or at BlendedSense.io. See you next week.